The SF25 single-seater completes the revolution initiated by Ferrari in 2024, too extensive to be concluded in a single season. The most striking change is the transition to a pull-rod front suspension, which is part of a broader conceptual overhaul. The foundation of the new Ferrari bears the signature of former designer Enrico Cardile, with aerodynamic development led by Diego Tondi, while the influence of the new technical director, Loic Serra, who arrived in October, is still partial. However, his expertise in tires and vehicle dynamics will be crucial in maximizing a car that will require a learning period given the numerous modifications. A standout innovation on the SF25 is the switch to a pull-rod front suspension, unrelated to improving tire performance in qualifying, one of the weak points in 2024. Instead, the suspension design aims for a better compromise between ride height control, tire management, curb absorption, and external aerodynamic influence. The benefits are primarily aerodynamic, as the pull rod mechanism is less effective in activating the internal springs and dampers. Additionally, the high mechanical stresses require the rod to be reinforced at the cost of increased bulk and weight. However, the pull rod must be considered within the car's new architecture. Firstly, the different inclination of the rod better directs airflow from the front wing toward the floor, but that's not all. The decision is also influenced by the cockpit being moved back by 3 to 5 centimeters, a modification that aligns with Lewis Hamilton's preferences. In 2023, the British driver had already complained about his former Mercedes' excessively forward driving position, which hindered his driving perception. In Ferrari's case, however, moving the cockpit backward aims to redistribute weight and streamline the front section of the chassis, again benefiting airflow management toward the floor. Consequently, around the front wheels, the chassis of the new Ferrari is lower, with a height less compatible with a pushrod front suspension, further favoring the pullrod design. In this section, we delve into a detailed visual analysis and comparison of the SF25, examining its design elements and how they stack up against competitors. The first images of the SF25 appear as digital renders, lacking fine details but likely accurate in overall geometry, considering recent presentation trends and the car's imminent debut at Fiorano. Despite perspective distortions, the new car maintains a similar offset between the upper suspension arms. Compared to McLaren, the prancing horse features a less aggressive anti-dive suspension geometry to stabilize the floor's posture under braking, opting for a different management of external airflow while preserving the driver's braking feedback. Just like in 2024, the steering arm remains in front of the lower suspension triangle, without imitating McLaren, which with the MCL38 had moved the element behind the same triangle. However, what is surprising about the SF25 is what appears to be a bulge in the chassis, which offsets the attachment point of the rear arm of the upper triangle. To confirm this impression, we will have to wait for trackside photographs, with the suspicion that it could be a choice to improve camber recovery limiting the inclination of the outer wheel in corners to maximize grip without increasing wear. The SF25 also aims to improve tire utilization over a single lap, seeking a good compromise between qualifying and race performance in a season where starting at the front will be crucial. The contribution of the new technical director, Loic Serra, will be key in this, as he brings highly valuable tire expertise to Ferrari. In addition to any changes made to the internal springs and dampers, Loic Serra's influence will be particularly noticeable in setup choices and in the management of preparation laps to optimize tire performance. Loic Serra stated that the SF25 was an evolution of the previous year's car, which had already demonstrated good potential. He explained that the team had worked hard, making changes to 99% of the car and evolving its architecture to maximize performance. The French engineer highlighted that the front pull rod suspension was merely the most visible of many significant modifications. Looking ahead to the upcoming season, he emphasized the high level of competition, where every millisecond would be crucial. As a result, the team was fully prepared to give its best effort in finding even the smallest gains that could make a difference. The Ferrari technical director added that they were eager to get on track. The repositioning of the cockpit necessitates a redesign of the rear section, starting with the gearbox casing, 
which has been shortened to maintain the regulated wheelbase of 3,600 mm between the front and rear wheels. Despite this, Ferrari continues to use the pull rod rear suspension, the only team to do so, leveraging the ultra compact concept developed in 2024. However, the renders of this area are particularly cryptic, encouraging us to wait for the actual car to appreciate the precise layout of the external suspension arms. The compacting effort also extends to the internal components beneath the bodywork. The triangular shape of the air scope, the air intake above the cockpit, remains the same as in 2024, confirming the minimal presence of central radiators, which are mostly positioned low in the side pods. However, somewhat contradicting this, the new engine cover no longer features a stabilizing fin, replacing it with small vents for hot air evacuation, suggesting an increased cooling flow in the central area compared to the past. Otherwise, the upper section of the engine cover resembles the late 2024 design, both in shape and in the cooling openings, a feature also adopted by the new McLaren. Moving down to the cockpit sides, the lateral air intakes are an evolution of the previous design. The P-shape returns, with a vertical slit drawing in air close to the chassis, which has low energy content and is therefore not particularly useful aerodynamically. From a three-quarter view, it is evident how much the inlets have been moved back, with the upper lip now extending further forward, following the trend set by rivals. Despite the repositioning of the cockpit and air intakes, the side pods appear much more sculpted in the lower section, increasing the total pressure of local airflow, which also benefits the aerodynamic efficiency of the floor. This results from significant work on both the mechanical layout and internal fluid dynamics, compacting all components beneath the surface. Regarding other aerodynamic surfaces, the front wing follows the late 2024 specification, featuring a slightly more rounded nose, but detailed analysis will have to wait until the car makes its track debut. The same applies to the floor, the most crucial component for ground effect cars and, therefore, the most concealed during the presentation phase. For now, the renders allow observation of various aerodynamic appendages around the cockpit, notably the double fairing for the mirrors whose supports have been centralized. The SF25 is built on a new concept, with a different balance between various performance areas. Ferrari aims to improve stability in long corners, a chronic weakness. It is telling that at the end of 2024, the Marinello team's technicians and engineers opted not to introduce further updates, instead investing in an experimental floor that Charles Leclerc described as a new approach and transferring the knowledge gained to the SF25. The goal is not simply to increase peak aerodynamic load, but to distribute it across a wider range of conditions and floor postures, enhancing consistency and driving predictability. The ultimate aim is to provide drivers with greater confidence in the car, encouraging them to push to the limit. This is a Ferrari willing to take risks, making significant changes in the final year of the ground effect regulations. However, it is important not to draw conclusions too soon. The SF25 single-seater embarks on a different development path, whose potential may not be immediately evident in results, but rather in long-term growth margins. In particular, the new suspensions, which have also undergone changes in their linkages and internal mechanics, will require a learning period to determine the most effective setup strategies while also ensuring stable ride heights for the floor. The results may not come immediately, but the 2025 Formula One Championship will be decided primarily over the long haul.